And I got to ask you something that that so I took I agreed to to a debate. Uh, I don't even know when this is going to be, but uh, on May 4th, I agreed to a debate with David Swanson around yeah. the question. David Swanson is I'll, I'll, here. I'll pull it up here. He's a. Um, I actually first heard about him years ago through uh, Glenn Ford actually had been, I think at the left forum, they had been in touch or something like that. But I want to ask you this question. I want to cheat and get you to give me my, my, my approach to this, because the question, here's the exact, the, the debate line is the, the, the topic to, to be debated is the proposition is war can never be justified. Large scale violence is never a better choice than nonviolent action. I am I am uh, arguing the the negative, right? That's how it's described, right? I, I would I would hope yeah. so. <laughs> yeah, I'm arguing the negative. So so so, what should be the approach? How should I frame my argument in defense of uh, at least the concept? Because obviously, certainly not on YouTube are we advocating anything, but but. In defense of the concept, in defense of the idea of 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 war, uh, justifiable war, and large scale violence being better than nonviolent action, how should how how would how do you think I should approach that? Well, there's a number of ways to approach it. I would first of all, I would say that 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 nonviolence and violence are not politically um, 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 opposite each other. You see, that's the first thing. So that the absence of violence, that the absence of violence in 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 human struggle doesn't 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 imply or negate the use of violence in order to liberate yourselves. I mean, you if, if Hamas didn't resist the Israeli occupation of the Zionist state, they would have been kicked to the curb. And right now we'd be talking about the Abraham Accords and how every mm. Arab nation has a relationship. To 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 um, to Israel for economic uh, uh, growth and the peace and prosperity of the region, bullshit. Mm. You see, it's 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 not true. Every people have a right to resist their oppression. That's why in the United Nations, the occupying occupying force has no right to self defense. Mm. So using the, using the idea that Israel has a right to self-defense means that as a nation state, it has a right to defend itself against the violence of the people that is that is enslaving and that is and that's whose land it's stealing. The people have a right to resist oppression and exploitation. You see, and that and 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 then you could take it to the next level. You could take it to Sun Tzu and von Klopswitz. What is politics? What is war? War is the continuation of politics by violent means. What is politics? The continuation of war by nonviolent means. So black folks have been oppressed in the United States through the use and implica and implica and, and, and implied violence of the state. So when we were struggling for civil rights as a nonviolent um, uh, uh, movement. We were struggling for our human rights and our right to be treated as as as, as ordinary citizens through nonviolent means. That doesn't mean it was it wasn't political. Hmm? And when the Black Panther Party comes along and the Black Liberation Army comes along and says that the, that we have to exact a, exact the consequence on our enemy when they initiate violence against us, what are we going to do? We're going to come out and 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 sing, "We shall overcome." Is that what we want to do? When we know historically that that has never worked, Vietnam wouldn't be Vietnam because they didn't, if, if they didn't get the memo, they didn't get the memo that they were supposed to lose. They met that memo shot past them. They were fighting the most powerful nation on the face of the earth with atomic bombs and everything, with an air force and everything that could bomb them into the Stone Age. But they didn't get that memo that they were supposed to lose. So they fought from one generation to the next. They built underground cities and, 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 and fought until what? Until them crackers left Vietnam hanging on helicopter skids. You see? So for an individual to say, that nonviolence and violence are the equal or the equivalent or the dichotomy of each other is totally false. 
Politics is the continuation of war by violent means, and war is the continuation of politics by violent means. So the first thing that I think you should say is that it's a false dichotomy that you're presenting right here. It's a false argument. That you think that because that that, that because a movement employs nonviolent tactics against a more powerful enemy, against a more powerful system, that somehow that means nonviolence is going to achieve their liberation and their and their and their freedom. That's not necessarily the case. Colonialism and white supremacy has never exited any colonized people by nonviolent means. Never. The French are still in Africa in countries that, that is so-called abandoned and left, okay? After they destroyed every piece of infrastructure that these people had and, and signed agreements and contracts with them that would keep them in subservient, uh, uh, in a subservient position to France for eternity. And whenever they decided, man, we don't want to do that, what did the French do? They sent the military in to depose them. They use violent means to maintain it. How would you want to oppose the military? Would you want to, you're going to pray them out of the country? You were going to wish them out the country? No, you have to Lay our bodies practice. in front of the tanks, Daruba. Lay, lay our right. bodies. Got, yeah, and let the tank run over action. your ass. <laughs> yeah, but look at Hamas. Hamas is using RPGs in order to neutralize tanks. They ain't laying in front of no tanks. And because of that, Millions of people have taken to the streets over, and the whole Zionist project is now exposed for what it is. Okay, why? Because they resisted. They resisted their oppression. Okay, that doesn't mean that every situation requires that we have to jump up and start talking about shooting and killing people. Okay, I mean, the 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 the, the moral and the eth the, the the moral. Uh, Credibility of nonviolent struggle is best epitomized in, in, in movements in which the majority of the people were fighting an external enemy that imposed themselves on them. It were more of them than the oppressor. So if the people stopped working, if the people blocked up the streets, if the people brought the economy to a halt, what did the system do? It resorted to violence. It, revolt, it resorted to oppression and, 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 and putting people in prison. And every repressive movement breeds resistance. And, and so I don't think that and there's no argument. I mean, when, I mean, you could use, uh, um, 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 uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Obama. The, the bomber in charge, the drone bomber in charge, you know? <laughs> he got a Nobel Peace Prize. And this man killed more <laughs> Africans than any other president on the planet mm. in, in history. He, and when he, look at his speech. Mm. He, in his speech for not, for, for, in his speech about war, he's the one that said in his speech that war sometimes is necessary. And although I accept this Nobel Peace Prize, I understand that although war shouldn't be our first choice, although we shouldn't choose violence over agreement, over negotiation, sometimes it's necessary. And one of those times when it's necessary, when an oppressed people can no longer suffer their oppression nonviolently, peacefully. Go listen to Malcolm. You go back and listen to Malcolm, man. You ready? All you got to do is when this knucklehead come on your show is play Malcolm. Message to the grassroots. And then just sit back. My case rests. Let him argue with Malcolm. You see? Yeah, no, it's not going to be on my show, just to be clear. It's going to be Yuri Smooter is hosting it. Uh, so, but, uh, Who's Yuri uh, Smooter? Who, he's a good brother. Smooth? He's he's a cool dude. He, he's, a, he's a friend of the, the, of the platform here. He's doing, he's, he's a good guy. Uh, I, I just so I, I'm I was admittedly curious and a bit fascinated by the invitation. So I'll I'll uh, yeah, but I figured yeah, and 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 the chat has 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 accurately made clear that uh, uh, as this was you know I already got this in my notes. Thank you, Manny. Uh, BAP statement. Uh, thank you. Oh for, yeah, Ajimu Baraka. Ajimu Baraka wrote that yeah. very clearly in a recent essay, and you should, I think you should go back to and, and pull up some of that too. Ajimu okay. really laid it on. 
especially when he was talking about the difference between Western concepts of, of human rights and the concept of the global South rights of human rights and how they in conflict with each other. One is propositioned on, on violence and, 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 the, and the supremacy of the state, and the other one is propositioned on the people's needs and the supremacy of governments working for, to benefit people and not people working to benefit government. And 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 so I mean, the, the the I don't even know how this argument could even proceed rationally without a fundamental understanding that it's the, the state has a monopoly on violence, on legal violence. They have a monopoly. They have a monop so anybody that resists and the first and the first you know the, the first um, rule of the state is to survive by any means necessary. You see, yeah, they might give us a few, you know, a few concessions. They might let us dance in the streets or walk down the streets, but let us start talking about taking that power away from them on a real basic and fundamental level. Watch how violent they get. You know, watch how they start outlawing free speech. I mean, look, look at, look at, look at what folks have been going through. Just talking about Israel as a white supremacist construct. They, they label anti-Semitic. They, they label all of this. Everybody forgets that the only Semites in Palestine are the Palestinians. The rest of them crackers come from the Ukraine and Europe. These are, that's where these Ashkenazis come from. And where did they get, where did that whole po pogrom towards, towards Jewry come from? It came from the Spanish Inquisition. It came from when, 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 when Muslims were run out of Andalusia would run out of Spain, and then you had the Spanish Inquisition, and everybody had to pledge allegiance to 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 the church, and and they were they were burned at the stake as heretics. And who were the biggest heretics in the eyes of the Christian Church back then? Jews. They killed Christ. I mean, you can't get no more demonized than that. Y'all killed the Savior. <laughs> and he died for all our sins. You all murdered the man that died for our sins. You, see? you know y'all wrong. <laughs> you know y'all was wrong. You see what I'm saying? And when and when the Muslims and the Moors were in, were in Spain, you understand. Ashkenazi or Sephardic Jews, they could open, they, they weren't persecuted and burned at the stake. But let the soon as them crackers came in, soon as they and, and this war, this war in Spain, you know, the, the, it, it ended in 1492 with, with the rise of, 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 of the Spanish Empire and all of that stuff. That war was going on for 150 years before they actually succeeded. You see. So we need to understand the origins of anti-Semitism. The origins of anti-Semitism has always came from the fight of, for, for, for the rise of the, of, the, of the Christian white supremacist construct and state based on their religious, on, on their religious uh, dogma. It didn't come from the Palestinians. It didn't come from Muslims. It didn't come from none of them. None of them persecuted uh, 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 um, uh, Sephardic Jews like, like the Europeans did. And so the whole object of the European settler state right now of Israel was to, get, was to get them out of Israel and put them someplace else, and then we'd be rid of their ass. You see? Put them on the Palestinians. Palestinians was like, damn, why us? We, we wasn't down with, 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 with Adolf and his crew and, and Eichmann and them, man. We, you know, we wasn't down with that. And what are you talking about anti-Semitic? We Semitic. We anti-us. You guys come from the Ukraine speaking Yiddish. You see? Talk I mean, about so, it's our so, homeland. <laughs> yeah, talk about, yeah. God gave it to us. Mm -hmm. And because God gave it to us, we could do anything to keep it. They don't went completely rogue. I mean, these crackers, I mean, they don't went rogue. They bombing other people's countries and embassies yeah, and shit, yeah. overflying their territory, killing their motherfucking ambassadors. Let, hey, hey, let a Muslim do that. Let, 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 let the Afghans, let the Afghans say, man, after 20 years, y'all messed us up. We're going to blow up the U.S. embassy. We're going to blow up the U.S. embassy in this damn world. I mean, really, see what it's happens. Like 